message is religion or life. Come on. You know, Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life. He didn't say, I come that you might have a lot more religion. You know, and, uh, but you know, even though uh, we, we all say this, but we've really got to understand what are we saying when we say no religion here, you know. George Michael sang a song, didn't he? No, no religion or something? Or <laughs> but, but religion basically is something like this. You know, a guy has a message or a guy receives something from heaven or he finds a book or some golden tablets or a golden throne somewhere. You know, you've heard these stories. Uh, and then he comes up to be the big prophet and uh, he then writes a whole bunch of things down and then he finds followers who will do what he's written down and then they all do it. And then when he passes away, they keep propagating it. And after a while, we have a religion based on what a man has received. But you see, Jesus didn't come that you might propagate a religious attitude to what he did. Because he said, I've come that you might have eternal life, you see. And so there's a big, big, big difference. And uh, unfortunately, most of the world is in religion. And even the Christian people are in Christian religion. You know, Jesus didn't come to start another religion. He, in fact, he, he was always having fights with the religious people, didn't he? And under Moses, see, even what Moses, the difference is Moses didn't write anything down. It, he received it. God wrote with his finger on tablets of stone and gave it to Moses and said, here, get the mob to do this. And remember, the first person to break the law was who? Moses. Because he threw the stones down in anger, didn't he? And broke God's law. That's right. My God. <laughs> well, the thing about the law is, or religious law, you really can't keep it. That's right. You see, and so you pretend you can keep it, and then you go around converting everyone to do what you are told that you should do, and then you can't do it, but you tell them they got to do it. And Jesus pointed that out, didn't he, and called them all hypocrites. He said, you'll cross an ocean to get people to come into your religion, which was Moses' law. And he said, but you don't do it. You call him hypocrite, yeah. you see. So the whole thing with religion is it actually makes you hypocritical. And, uh, you know, hypocrite's always pointing the finger at someone else, you know, but Jesus came along and said, you know, first take out that uh, big log, you know, out of your own eye, and then maybe you can get the little splinter out of somebody else's eye. You see? So it's all really about life. Yeah. The whole message that we have is life. Uh, and, and that we have eternal life. That's the gift that God has given us, the gift of eternal life. So we have a wonderful Jesus. We have a wonderful life. We have a wonderful world. Everything is wonderful and great, except we don't know how to live it properly in the now. That's right. See, our, our, our messages that come to us deal with the past. Thank God my sins are forgiven. Thank God for that. Then we say, oh, my God, even when I die, I'm going to move into eternal blessings and wonderful life. But the problem is now. now. Yeah, that's right. Well, that shouldn't really be a problem. No. It's only a problem because we don't have the answer. You see? Well, you know, in the book of Isaiah, uh, uh, Jeremiah, they knew what the answer was. They told us. They said that the time's going to come when God will put a new heart into man. Yeah. You'll take out that old stony heart and put in a new heart. See, he was uh, looking forward all those thousands of years to a time when the new covenant would come into being, when God will no longer strive with men. See, he doesn't, you know, God's not striving with mankind anymore because the answer was his son Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world, which includes yours and mine. So he's no longer striving. In fact, God is saying, why don't you all get it? I'm not angry. Come on, that's right. Yeah. I'm not an angry God like in the old covenant because there was no, um, there was no answer. There was no nothing in those days uh, except looking forward to the time when Christ would die for the sins of the world. Another technical hitch. Okay, we're going straight. We're going straight. Plug it straight in. Direct line into the microphone. Okay, I'm in. Okay, fantastic. Do I need this? Yeah. I do. Okay. So, the answer has been given is Jesus Christ crucified. Right. Him crucified. But because we haven't quite got it by revelation yet, you see, that the Father is no longer striving with us because of who is in us, 
because we're accepted in the beloved because of who is in us. See, Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, that now has, has to come forth in its full floodlight of grace and truth. You know, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. You can't mix law and grace. doesn't work. So now we're moving out of one into another. And God is doing what he said he would do, what he told the prophets, that he'd take out that old heart, that old man, that old stony heart, and replace a new one in there. See, you're a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, new things must come. Well, let me read this because I did have a scripture here, and it's good because this scripture here should get us to think you know, but deeper as to who we really are. It says here in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 16, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. I'm not supposed to know you after the flesh. You're not supposed to know me. It goes even deeper than that. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, called Jesus of Nazareth, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Be reconciled with your God through the means that he has provided. The answer has been given. Jesus Christ and him crucified. You see, the problem is we, we just, we're just sort of so short of knowing this truth. And that's why life is difficult. As I pointed out last week, it's not about dying daily, it's about being dead. You see, so it's the same thing. Jesus Christ and him Crucified, But you've got to get out of your mind of seeing Jesus on a cross being crucified. If you know all the Catholics with the crucifix, it gives you the impression that he's still on the cross. He's not on the cross. And so if you have a crucifix with a Jesus hanging there, it gives the wrong impression when people see that. <laughs> because he actually died and was buried and was resurrected. And now he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. So we, I don't mind a cross, but get rid of the Jesus hanging on it. Because he's not there anymore. And he's not going to be crucified again for anybody. It's done, finished, dusted. You see? So because we haven't quite understood that, we still have a sense that we've been crucified with Jesus and we're hanging on a cross. And that's where we're dying daily. Oh, I'll be a little bit better now tomorrow after I keep on this cross. Well, you won't. Because the only way you're going to get better is when you die. Because when you're dead, the law now has no jurisdiction over you. Amen. See, the law has no jurisdiction over a dead person, only one who's still living. Because the law was given to lead you to this truth, Christ, Jesus crucified. So in the mind of God, and isn't one of them the mind of God? See, in people's minds, you've got a lot of problems and no answers. In God's mind, it's all done and all finished. I'll no longer strive with man. I've given them the answer. My son, crucified. Dead, buried, resurrected and glorified. Who is the express image of myself. See, God has not hasn't got a problem. We just don't understand, so we have a problem. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. You know what our weapon is? It's called light. Good. That's great. Light. Why? Because you've been delivered from the domain of darkness. And so when you wield your light sword, like in Darth Vader, wasn't he have a sword, a laser beam? When you do this, take it out of the scabbard of light and start wielding that thing. It's a two-edged sword. It is done. It is done. It is finished. It is finished. No more to do. You've got to wave that sword around. Chop some heads off. Light is the answer. See, John said this, the last message coming to us through the Apostle John, who was the longest living apostle, and also the last one to write anything in the New Testament. He said, this is the message that we'd heard from him, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness whatsoever. 
Good news. Who is in you? You, that's why you are the light of the world. God is in you. He said, I'll live in you, I'll move in you, I'll talk through you. All through Paul's writings, this is shown to be true. But we just don't quite get it yet. So we've still got to hang on to that religious stuff. So what is religion? Doing what someone wrote down who said they got it from a particular source whether a heavenly or angelic or found some golden plates in the ground or whatever, and then they start to write it down and say, now, now what I do, you do. And it's propagated. But unfortunately, it's error. Because we have a Bible, which is the mind of God open for us, and this word is a living word, and we can prove this word to be true in our own lives. And of course that word is light. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And if Moses, who was the lawgiver, said, there's one coming after me, he said, this prophet you better listen to. And if you do not listen to him, you're going to have a big problem. That's the prophet. Now, there's a lot of other prophets out there, but they're non-prophets as far as I'm concerned because the Word of God has come first before the others. And whatever comes first has the authority. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't want a Johnny-come-lately prophet to follow with the, the writings and then have to do those things, which you cannot do, by the way. You cannot keep them. And if you break any aspect of the law, you break the whole law book. So if you're going to keep the law, you've got to be 100% careful to do all of it. Or else it's null and void. Well, the good news is you don't have to do any of it if you've got Jesus Christ in you because he did it for you. Amen. He's the only one that could keep the law.